Hey guys, so I am running out of posts in my field and with John going to school we are trying really hard not to be spending more money on anything even if it's something as important as grazing posts. So I'm going to show you today how to do the same thing with what is called a digger link. This is on a conveyor belt for digging up potatoes and you take one end off and sharpen it. And I'm going to use these and a piece of wood and it works fantastically it's super cheap I think I have about six of these and these stick in the ground a little better too they're about a foot longer than the normal post that I use so I'm excited to get started and hopefully you'll enjoy this little DIY okay so this one is just a tiny bit too long but you don't want it too short if it's too short what will happen is that they will be too close to the digger link with the rope and it won't instead of swiveling it'll just it'll get wrapped around the post too easily so this is what we're gonna do you only want this to be a tiny bit wider than your post because you want it to swivel but you don't want it to come up and over the top and just, the more wood you leave intact here the less splintering the less likelihood you have of it actually um, coming apart when the goat puts force on it and usually I would put I, I would put the digger link in one end and I would put the other um, and I would put the rope on the other end but I'm kind of thinking maybe I'll put the digger link in the middle and see if maybe it swivels a little better just out of curiosity I think this is the one I want 15 sixteenths so just under an inch Okay, so now I need to make a rope. So they do turn out better if they're braided. I'm going to take three times the length that I need. I usually like to double up on that so that I have a six strand rope instead of just a three strand, just because the bigger goats can break it. Again, it's just baling twine. It's about as simple a rope and as free a rope as you can make. First I find something to loop over. In this case, there will be a post. And then I'm gonna loop one more time. And one more time. And I know that it looks like this isn't gonna be even, but I'm gonna walk back and pull on it until it is. And then this is the secret of every farmer is you just cut the string with the string. This is our buck dragon. And I don't know if uh, one of these would hold him or not. Lately he's been breaking stakes and breaking ropes, but we've been putting on him on older ropes. And so it's not like it's not like we really put him on the strongest rope we had. Huh. Um so we, we've tried to put him out recently, quite a bit, and it just never works every single time. He's just getting too strong for his own good. Huh, buddy? Maybe I shouldn't have pulled that one. That one looks like a mistake. You're so helpful. Okay, so this is the important part. The way that you wrap the rope. Because you, you want the pressure to be equal from the outside and from the inside to hold it together. We might have to do it from the other end in order for this to work. Just because this, this is kind of uneven and we want it to be really, really even. So I'm gonna undo this one and see if I can open it up a bit so that it'll travel down to let it through. So.
See how that works? Not sure how well you can see that. See that? That makes it so that there's pressure from the outside holding the wood together. And then this will be this will be exactly how it'll sit on the ground so when she pulls it'll lift it up a little bit whereas if we did this it would pull it down so that's the way we're going to do it okay so i use an old axe that's already broken on the back it's easier for me to lift than a sledgehammer right after we water so that the ground is soft because we have so many rocks. If you try to swing too big of a swing, you're just gonna bend your rod. You have to pound it in a little bit at a time, let it get around the rocks. Um, we can't use those screw-in rods here just because, again, too many rocks and then it won't hold into place. These really long rods really work well. And even though it had that little bend in the bottom, it doesn't really matter. It's gonna bend a little around those rocks anyway. Sometimes it helps to change your position so that the axe is coming at it from a different angle. And that should be good. We're good to go. Let's decide who we're going to put out here. But I'm going to braid this up just a little bit more. And I'm going to move my camera back so that when I put my goat on, she doesn't knock my camera over. Now the problem is, whether I sink this down or I don't, uh, this rope, when she comes back across, is most likely going to catch. So... Again, it's not a perfect system. I think mama. Is it nice? Nice to have a different spot? Thoughts? No thoughts. This is Lemon Drop. She was Empress's daughter and we bred her up so that she has nicer teats now. Much easier to milk, just as much quantity. Isn't she a pretty thing? We have also done this with the milk cow. But with the milk cow, generally they have a halter on rather than the, just the strap around the neck. And that way they can't really muscle through it. This is Rosemary. Hello, Rosemary. So she is Chai's daughter and Dragon's half-sister. Hi, baby. And the goats uh, graze on it rotationally. We don't have one big fence. For one thing, fence posts won't go into our ground without bending. So. We graze the goats out here in this space. We graze the geese on the other side and the ducks on the other side. You can see how nice and tall our grass is. This is in a spot that's actually been grazed down a lot. It's above the heads of the goats where they haven't grazed. Ha! Huh. Ha! Huh. This is the other way to do it and this way actually works much better. Same principle, but you don't have this jagged end on the side that, you know, can get 
caught up on things. So this works really, really well. I didn't use just one lid, I used two lids. Can you see that? Just made it a little bit stronger and this pivots like that. Same principle, so anybody out there who doesn't use all of their lids for their five gallon buckets, I could really use some because the two by four method, although it works, it doesn't work nearly as well as this one. So there is our happy grazing system. We do rotational grazing, more like mob grazing, but they, they mob in one tiny spot all by themselves. Instead of it being a group that moves from place to place, it's animals that move from place to place. And the grazing ties that we use are dog ties. If we purchase them, they're about $6 and they last a really long time as long as you set them all the way into the ground but for those of you who have these materials on hand maybe this is a better solution we have other videos about this kind of thing so make sure to go check them out and we'll talk to you later